everyone. Hello. Welcome to Spectrum Art. Today we are going to be actually working on a uh, follow-up to another uh, project that we had already completed and finished. We're actually going to be playing and making a playing card mini journal which is a great way to use those uh, really pretty cards. I know some of us have playing cards that are uh, vintage or just have great images. Uh, this is a phenomenal way to go ahead and utilize those. Uh, and this was a challenge that was posted actually by um, Kateri's Crafty Ideas. And I'll be sure to link that video down below so you can see. Um, she's a, yes, a fantastic crafter. And that way you guys can also see the, um, uh, the other crafters also went ahead and created some as well. And you can see their takes. Actually, I've, I'm going to link down below a Brill Martinez crafter in the rough. Mm -hmm. She did an amazing little book, um, just full of details and great ideas. Uh, the, with a ribbon pull. Oh, you guys just got to go check that out. And of course, Katiri made one as well. So, uh, mm -hmm. Just, yeah, just amazing, amazing crafters. I'll link them down below. Okay, let's go ahead and um, let me show you what we did actually. And then this way you can get an idea of what I'm actually talking about and what we're gonna be working on. And you can decide if it's something that you wanna go ahead and do. And I guess I should show you first, this is an actual uh, box of a playing card. And basically what it has become is a holder for the book, uh, which is inside which is right here. And uh, I've actually went ahead and opened up the box and then I lined it on the inside and used distress inks, as you can see. Um, let me bring that light up. And because I just didn't want the inside of the box to, uh, to be plain white, but it could be. And if you do not have a box such as this one, if it's just a regular box, you can always go ahead and, uh, you know, paint it. Use your acrylic paints. Um, Natasha from um, Journey, of Journey of Crafting did some amazing um, playing card boxes as well. So if I can find that video, I will link it down below as well. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let me show you what we have actually done here. So this is a playing card. The covers are actually made out of two playing cards from this deck. And then the spine has a, um, a lace just to go ahead and cover because I did do a hidden spine. Some of the girls did not. So again, that's why it's great to see other crafters. You get different ideas, right? So I'll show you this one. I went ahead and used a, um, an image um, pack, which is from Far Mirage. It's called Love Letters, which I thought was perfect um, because, you know, you're writing little letters and this is also great for Valentine's Day. So uh, I'll link that down below as well because her images are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Here we have a little pocket that we've used. Uh, again, we made using uh, the same papers from the collection. And you have here that image, you have some uh, tea dyed paper, you have uh, some scrapbooking paper. We also will find uh, little pockets and tucks again made with those images. And then some ephemera that I went ahead and found online, which I downloaded for free and it says love letters on it. And some more papers, another image. This is an actual tuck. So you can actually tuck items in there if you wanted to. Maybe a little picture. Some more of the tea dyed paper. Some more of those really pretty images with another one of those love letters. Uh, little graphics that I found. I went ahead and also stamped throughout. Uh, here and there, you and me. This is actual piano paper. So just absolutely beautiful. Some washi. This is just a really cute envelope, which I went ahead and tucked another one of those images in there from Far Mirage. Some more papers. I believe that's a tuck as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Another bit of stamping. So very romantic, cute book. I just want to give you guys an idea. Here's some more piano paper with another stamp. Uh, image. Look at how pretty she is. 
some stamped flowers, tea dyed paper. The other half of that envelope is here and it's become a little pocket where I put in this cute graphic that says love letters. Uh, this is, again, I had some leftover little pieces as well as one of the images, so I made it into a flip. Some vellum. And um, again, just a really quick flip, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, an idea of what it is that we're going to be making uh, so that we can actually go ahead and get right into it and get started. I'll give you the uh, supply list, yes, that you're going to go ahead and need to create a long. And we'll make one together. Uh, the one that I'm going to go ahead and make for the sake of the video is going to be, oh, how cute is that? is going to be a little bit more simple. I'm not gonna be doing any of the tucks or any of the uh, pockets, because you can always add those, of course. I'm just gonna make a very simple one so that you guys get an idea as to what it is that you can make. And this is just a really cute quote and image as well. And there's our other playing card. And then, of course, it all just kind of tucks neatly for safekeeping into the actual uh, box again. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The supplies that we're going to be using are very basic journal making supplies. The first thing we're going to need, of course, is going to be a front and back cover. And the whole thing to this is using the playing cards, correct? So go ahead and look through your playing cards, see if you have maybe some pretty ones, some vintage ones. Uh, you might want to do a theme, perhaps, uh, or maybe just some regular ones, which is kind of what we're going to be doing. These are some pretty plain, you know, not so pretty cards, but you will notice that they're kind of cool because they're oversized cards. Look at these. They're pretty large, aren't they? Um, this is your typical card, and you can see the size difference there. The standard card is two and a half by three and a half inches. Uh, I believe it's bridge cards that are a quarter inch narrower. Um, but you know, we just thought these were super cool and whimsical and I'm sorry about the glare. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use those for our project. You might actually have some, uh, tea dye cards. Uh, I'm sorry, not tea dye, some tea cards, or maybe even some game cards. You might have an old board game that you no longer use, or you could use two of those cards. So whatever you have in your stash is what you want to go ahead and use. You're also going to need some papers for your signature. You saw that we use some tea dyed papers as well as some scrapbooking paper. So you can go ahead and just go through your stash. What do you have? You might have some uh, piano uh, paper. You might have some music sheets. You might have some phone books, uh, magazines, books. Uh, we're gonna be doing an Alice in Wonderland theme. So guess what? We have some pages in here that we could use as well as what some images so look through your books and see what kind of interesting um, pages you might have as well you're going to need a needle and thread for your signature you're also going to need to create your spine and to do your spine you're going to need a piece of cereal box or some really heavy cardstock such as this one um, and of course, the size of the paper that you're going to need is going to depend on uh, the height of your card as well as the width, right, of your spine. So in this case, we know that this is three and a half and the spine here, we were limited because we needed to fit inside the box. In this case, um, or if you're not using a box, we are not limited to that. Obviously, this is a much taller card and how wide we're gonna want that spine to be is going to you know depend on once we start playing so you get to decide that um, if you are using a box or not also to reinforce the spine you notice that here we went ahead and used some lace and i had the lace somewhere in here i did it's gone but you're going to need some lace or some fabric maybe some seam binding something that's going to go ahead and stabilize that spine as well uh, you're going to need uh, images if you want to go ahead and um, use images in your journal. There's the lace, of course. Um, and in this case, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing some Alice in Wonderland. So we went ahead and pulled um, some pages or images that we thought we might want to use. You're going to also need uh, your distress inks if you want to distress your images or some of your pages. And you will also need two clips to hold your um, 
signatures together uh, as you're actually stitching them in. Now, if you do not have these kind of clips, you can definitely use regular paper clips. Um, what else are we gonna need? We're gonna need some glue, okay? And if you notice here, we have something that's optional. We are going to be using the We Are Memory Keeper uh, tear guide. And we're hoping that this is gonna help us to tear the pages and give us a jagged edge, which is gonna be a different look from this very clean straight edge that we had done on this one. So we'll see, we might like it, we might not. Again, it's a matter of playing with what we have um, at hand. And then, um, last but not least, you're going to need, if you wish to use your cards, if you have some plain ones and you're just gonna leave them like this, that's perfectly fine. In our case, we are going to be altering these because uh, to us, they don't really say Alice in Wonderland, right? And they don't really say I'm beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and alter these. And to do that, we're going to need a piece of sandpaper, some gesso, possibly some paints or stains, uh, maybe a napkin, I I'm not sure yet. So we'll see what it is that we do, but I'm letting you know that because as you watch us um, create uh, and you create along, you might see different things, but we'll make sure to try and point them out or um, you know, let you know if uh, anything has come up that we hadn't thought of before. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and create. Step one is totally optional. If you're using some beautiful cards with great images, like the ones that we did, that first one, the smaller one, then you can just skip the step completely. But all we're gonna do here is we're gonna prep our cards by sanding them down lightly. Basically, you wanna sand them down to remove the protective coating. Then we're gonna wipe them down with a wipe. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and gesso. Now, I highly recommend that you use multiple light coats of gesso uh, because this is going to prevent the warping. Remember, in essence, when we're sanding them down, they are now becoming unprotected paper. They're just paper, which means that they will warp if you add way too much water to them, and gesso has water. So just make sure you go ahead and do some light coats. In step two, we are going to add color and we are using the stress oxides and we are drying in between each color. And that is just to help us from not creating mud. Um, basically, when the colors are fully dry, then they are pretty much permanent at that point in time. Um, so we just dry in between each of the colors. And um, several of you had actually requested uh, in previous videos that we actually show you the entire process on how we actually alter some of our cards. So I've tried to include a bit more of that content in this section. I did, of course, um, snip here and there, uh, just basically snipping out, you know, when we're drying, for example, because, well, I let's face it, I don't think you guys wanna watch us drying paint. So I did snip a little bit of that. I read an interesting fact that I figure I'd share with you guys. I read that the King of Hearts is the only king without a mustache. Is that true? I have no idea. But why don't you guys look through your decks and let us know down below. Is it? I'd love to know. Another interesting fact is that the face cards, uh, which consist of the king, the queen, and the jack, are actually referred to as the court. Now, another cool thing is that the 52 cards actually represent the 52 weeks of the year. I did not know that. I also didn't know that the four suits represent the four seasons, and that 13 cards in each suit represent the 13 weeks in each season. The 12 royals represent the 12 months. How interesting is that? Here 
here is another interesting tidbit. There are 52 cards in a standard deck, right? And we discussed that there are 52 weeks in a year. However, did you know that if you add up all the symbols on a deck of cards, it equals the same amount of days in a year. In other words, 365. Do you know who the world's largest manufacturer of playing cards is? Do you know their name and where they're based out of? You might think you don't, but you kind of do because it is actually a company based out of the United States. They're right here in the United States of America. And the name of the company is the United States Playing Card Company. Of course, for short, they go by the USPCC. Now you might still be sitting there thinking, well, Maddie, I still don't know this company. What are you talking about? Well, you don't know them by that name, but you do know them by their well-known brands. Um, they have a lot of different lines that include aviator cards, B, and bicycle. So you've seen those, and I'm sure you have a deck or two of those laying around the house. The USPCC, or the United States Playing Card Company, is also the top, the number one uh, card uh, company manufacturer that is used for casinos worldwide. And now it is trivia time. So we talked about how the USPCC or the United States Playing Card Company is the top manufacturer. The question is, when was the first deck of cards officially produced? I'll make it easy. I'll give you a multiple choice. Would you say A, 1805, B, 1845, C, 1885, or D, 1905? If you said C, 1885, you are correct. Be sure to save up your mop-up paper towels, we do, and we use them in our projects. They are great for giving texture and color to your projects. You'll also notice at the end that we ended up not using the red oxide and that's because we thought A, we had enough color and B, the napkin was going to have uh, some reds and some pinks so we decided to just stick with those three original colors. When it comes time for our napkins, we always, uh, of course, try to match or find a theme that will go with the colors uh, that we've chosen, but we also are looking for a fit, a good fit. Uh, some napkins, of course, have larger images than others. Uh, once we actually find a napkin that we believe is going to work, we like to um, take a look and select sections of the image that are going to work well that we want to keep, and we tear them by hand. You can use the wet paintbrush technique, uh, which is just done by dipping your brush in water and then actually uh, drawing around the image, uh, so to speak, that you want to go ahead and keep, and that gives you a more controlled tear. Now, don't throw away the extra plies that you remove from your, from your napkin, because those are fabulous for actually smoothing down your napkin once you've actually glued it down. It prevents it from sticking to your fingers and tearing.
Now let's take a step back even further back in history. Most scholars agree that the playing cards were invented in the 9th century. However, do you know who or whom is responsible for actually inventing the first deck of cards? If you said the Chinese, then you would be right. The Chinese invented playing cards as far back as the 9th century. And of course, scholars also agree that the very first real deck, and I say real as in quote unquote, of printed cards was actually the 32 card Chinese domino deck. Here's where it gets really interesting. These first packs were printed, of course, yes, on paper, some were paper, yet others were printed on bones. Yes, actual bones. Wow. And yeah, some others have been discovered that were actually printed on wood, actual wood. So very interesting. Can you imagine that game? That is definitely a game to talk about, right? You're sitting around the table with your friends, with your buddies, with your family, and you're actually playing with pieces of bones. Most definitely an interesting game. Once your cards are dry, removing the um, overage is pretty simple. Of course, you just take a pair of scissors, uh, or you could also use a nail file or a sanding block or a small piece of uh, sandpaper, and that tends to give you a really nice clean edge. Always, of course, go back and make sure that you uh, add extra glue if needed to ensure that all of your uh, napkin is adhered, especially around the edges. Distressing and edging your borders is, of course, an optional step, but one that I really uh, highly recommend. It just gives projects that very finished look. Uh, and all you need, of course, is your distress inks or just some ink pads if you do not have them and a permanent marker. Prepping your pages or your signature is a really fun part of this project. I mean, well, it's all fun, but this is a really fun part because you also get to be super creative with what you have uh, laying around your house. Uh, whether it's some um, uh, vintage piano roll paper or some tea dye papers, some scrapbooking pages, uh, phone books, magazines, envelopes, um, boy, just about any kind of paper that you have at hand. Uh, vellum uh, is a super fun thing to actually go ahead and use uh, in your signatures as well. And of course, you are not limited to just paper. Uh, you could use wax sheets, you could use fabric, you could use laces, you could use just about anything and you can even layer them up. So you're only limited by what actually fits uh, within the size of the book that you're actually working with.
When working with your pages, you might actually find some really cool elements such as this edge right here. So we wanted to keep some of that darkening because it was a really cool effect. It was almost like an ombre effect. So look out for images and other cute features within your papers. Uh, and if you do not have a tear ruler, a simple ruler will do. It still creates a jagged edge, which really lends a very interesting finishing touch to your pages. Well, who doesn't like pretty images, right? Ephemera uh, or images are a great way to add a cohesive theme to your journal. And let's face it, they're just really pretty to play with. Um, of course, uh, when selecting e or prepping your images, you do want to consider, once again, distressing them and edging them. Um, it does take some work, of course, cutting them, printing them, finding them. Uh, but overall, they're just a great fun way to add some interest to your pages. You, of course, you can find images just about anywhere, right? Some ephemera can be found in magazines, in books. Uh, you could also download images for free a lot of times online. And uh, there's also uh, image packs that you could purchase on places like Etsy. So a lot of different options. What are some of your favorite themes uh, when it comes to images? Do you like uh, 40s, 50s, maybe a, an era? Or do you like uh, themes such as specific characters like Alice in Wonderland? Or maybe is it butterflies or birds, uh, Victorian, uh, sewing, cooking, so many different options. I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys as far as what are some of the ones that you'd like to see uh, in upcoming projects. Because we know we have our favorites. Uh, you know, Madison loves to do Harry Potter and I love to do Alice in Wonderland. But what do you guys like? Um, we just might feature it, right, in one of our videos. So please do share with us what kind of uh, themes are your favorites. Madison just reminded me that I forgot to ask you guys if you have a preferred style. Do you like shabby chic? Yeah, is it shabby chic? Is it steampunk? Uh, what is your style? Do you have a preference? Or what about do you have one that you actually do not like? Uh, like some people really do not like um, anything that is uh, steampunk. Some people do not like anything that is uh, mythical, such as unicorns and mermaids and full of color. Are there ones that you absolutely love? Are there ones that you absolutely do not like? Let us know. There are a lot of great videos out there uh, specifically addressing how to sew in your signatures into a spine and all kinds of different types of uh, spine bindings. Um, and here we're going to go ahead and keep it very simple. For our paper, we actually chose um, a piece of cardstock from our stash and it was actually from a previous mixed media project that we had done but the colors match beautifully uh, you'll need of course the spine piece if you're doing a hidden spine like we are you'll need another piece that basically fits inside that canal of the spine or a gutter because it has a shape of a canal or a gutter right uh, like the gutters that go around your house on your roof uh, and so you'll need a smaller piece uh, that is going to fit within that spine. We sew the signatures to this piece and then we'll add the signatures that are sewn in and glue them on to 
our gutter or canal or spine. Um, and then of course, what happens is this actually hides the threads. So it is now a hidden spine, a hidden signature spine, and it creates a much cleaner look. However, once again, there are tons of videos out there showing you all kinds of different methods. Uh, and so many of, the, of them look amazing with um, the signatures on the outside. Actually, um, several of the friends, if you watch the video that I'm going to link below, uh, created them with uh, a spine that actually shows the signatures, the sewing in of the signatures, and they look phenomenal. So there are lots of choices out there for you to choose from. And, you know, try one, try the other, try them all. Uh, if you have a deck of cards, you've got 52 cards to play with. So you've got plenty of choices. And since we're talking about cards again, um, of course, we all know that card deck collecting is a hobby for many around the world, right? I am no collector, but I can definitely say that we love playing cards. Uh, they're just beautiful images. Uh, they're great to stick into pockets, to make ephemera with, to alter, to make pocket letters with, to make ATCs or a artist train trading cards, excuse me, uh, with. So lots of uses in the crafty world. Uh, and they're just so pretty and fun to look at. The rarest and the oldest deck of cards is considered to be a 52 deck card deck uh, from the mid 1500s and it is actually from uh, Netherlands and it actually resides in the New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. It was originally sold to a collector back in the 70s, 1970s and guess how much it was sold for? $2,800, almost $3,000. Now on eBay, you have some really um, obscure deck of cards, such as like the uh, Microsoft David Blaine Create Magic Deck. That's what it's called. And those regularly go between $400 to $1,000. Oh, if only we could find one of those, right? Just think of all the crafty goodies that you could actually buy with that money but you never know. So next time you're out and about at a swap meet or at a thrift store, keep your eyes open. You just might find one. When it comes to the front and the back covers, here as well, you actually have choices. You could decide whether you want them in front of the signature flaps or behind. You could also choose at this point in time to add additional layers such as washi uh, to hold them down. Of course, always reinforce washi with glue. Uh, we are using Fabri-Tac, which is a, um, a glue that is acetone based, which means that it does not warp paper. So anything within that um, line of glues is a really good choice to use when you're working with paper. Now, playing cards actually played an important role during the war. Did you know that? They played a very important role during World War II. Uh, the American Card Company actually collaborated with the government in making special decks for our soldiers. There was this secret hidden inside of them. These decks would actually peel apart when they got wet. And inside were maps that would actually lead our soldiers to freedom or to safe pickup zones. Now, in Vietnam, entire crates of Ace of Spades cards were shipped by the company to our U.S. soldiers. Uh, I know you've all seen and we've all seen movies where um, our GIs actually had the Ace of Spades tucked in their uh, the brim of their hat. But do you know why they did that? Well, guess what? Neither did I. But hold tight and I will tell you as soon as we get to our next step.
reinforcing your spine is key. So take a look at your laces, your fabrics, your trims, um, and it does not need to be, of course, uh, fabric. It could also be paper. You could actually layer paper on top of layer until your spine is strong enough. Now, I struggled going back and forth with choices, and luckily, Madison stepped in and saved the day and decided that she was just gonna layer them, and that worked out beautifully. Now, going back to where we left off, why did our GIs have the Ace of Spades tucked into their helmets? Well, here's the answer. They did it because it was believed at the time, which of course is now proven to have been a myth, but somehow word got out that the Viet Cong were superstitious of the card and that if they saw it, they would actually flee the battle at the sight of these cards. Uh, so if they actually saw it resting upon a body of a dead one, uh, they, they would actually flee uh, in fear. Of course, as I mentioned, it was a myth, but still, it's a great, you know, American history that we actually had to have boxes and boxes of Ace of Spade cards actually shipped for our GIs. This is a great time to decide whether you'd like to add a closure. Now again, if you are using a regular deck and you're going to be using the box, then um, you're limited because you do want the ability for your book to be able to slide in and out of the box. In our case, we are not uh, because again, we're just using an oversized card. So we decided to add a closure. Uh, and this is a time to go ahead and decide whether you want it under your uh, spine uh, fabrics or papers or over or in between, which is the choice that we decided. We decided to go ahead and use a ribbon closure, but the options are endless. I have another trivia question for you guys. How many decks of cards do you think are produced and manufactured by just the United States playing card company each year? Would you believe me if I told you there are over 100 million decks produced by this company alone, not to mention the other smaller ones as well? So you see, when you look at your crafting supply and you look at your playing cards like I do, you don't have to feel so guilty. You don't have to feel so bad. Yours is just a small contribution to the 100 million decks that are floating around each year. And here we have the finished project. project. Yes, our cute little Alice in Wonderland journal, uh, full of great color. It's gorgeous. Um, aw, you like it? I think, I think it turned out super I think cute. it really made my day. Aw, I'm glad it did. Uh, did you have fun? What was your favorite part? Maybe um, the oxides colors. Yes, you did a great job. Thank you for picking out oxides for us and um, Lace. the laces. Yes, uh, in addition to all the ephemera on the inside, those were Madison's picks. So thank you, absolutely. And look, we still have room to add another signature. We also have room to go ahead and add all kinds of ephemera if we wanted to. Uh, so there's still plenty of room in here. Um, Again, hopefully you guys will give this a try. Hopefully it gave you some inspiration on... Please let us know on, in the comments which mm -hmm. one is your favorite. Yeah, which one do you like? Do you like the smaller ones, the bigger ones? Do you like the Alice uh, or the love letters? I think that both of them definitely could be something that would be fun to make again. So we hope you guys will try it. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. God bless.